and we're live <laughs> hello hello everybody um so for anyone who doesn't know um me and paul done a stream over on his channel so this is kind of like the second episode i think i called it episode two as well of our musical chat series your uh, voice is very funny oh is it oh hang on let me have a look see how it is on the playback Chat series. Uh, it, it, it sounds like you're going like that. Oh, really? It seems to be coming through fine on the stream. Hmm. This is the problem with um, streaming on. It's a bit crap sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. Because on the stream, I've just brought the stream up. And it's what, let me. I don't know, it's gonna... oh. I'll have a quick listen on my phone as well. See how it's sounding at the minute. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, but your sounds a bit. Um... Oh, it sounds it sounds alright on the playback on my phone and my computer. Oh, oh let me have a little. Um... <laughs> Apologies, right. people. We got some. Ten... If, I, if I'm going to leave, and. I... Oh. <laughs> um, but we got ten people here. Hello. So yeah. Anyway, if you guys, if someone could let me know if if, if my voice is sounding. Bit dodgy but it sounds all right on the playback and stuff um but yeah today's stream is going to be uh all music related but we might talk about some films as well still me and paul were saying backstage um okay cool sounds good on my end lovely thank you um Anybody? hello there we go much better yeah okay cool <laughs> <laughs> you were just you were talking like it was it you were going, oh, right. it was really slow so I have no you know what idea. it's really weird now you say that i remember during a stream i've done at some point someone else sounded like that on my end so i have heard that before it's problem with stream i think it's just so up and down yeah it's just it's a bit silly but yes i am here so apologies for everybody who came in for half past seven <laughs> um i had Every night at seven o'clock, I put my youngest who's four to bed, and the one night that I need to get her to sleep, she doesn't. Yes. Which is typical. <laughs> which is funny because you mentioned me and went, Do you want to start at seven o'clock? And I was like, mm. in my head, I'm like, You haven't laughed. Yes. But in the text message, I was like, Probably best not, James, because yes. uh, I've got to put my daughter to sleep. Yeah. That even sounds even worse. That's all yeah. I'm putting her down like she's a dog. Um, uh, yeah. But yes. Oh, well, hey, we're, we're here nevertheless, and we'll, we'll go until nine still, so we've got plenty of time. Um, but like like Sam backstage, you know, I don't because most of our viewers are of course movie people. I don't know how many people are going to be are going to turn up for this, but it's fun for us because we're both big music fans as well to come on and talk about music every now and then. Yes, indeed. Mm. Have we got anybody coming in with questions yet or not? Uh, no, Steve. We've had we've had Steve who's just said um, sounds okay on my end. Um, I'm just oh my god, sorry. Oh, there we go. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. God, <laughs> I was going to say you've got that. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, from my point of view of music, um, mm -hmm. I'll go straight in mm -hmm. from obviously my um, taste. What do you think of the new Liam Gallagher track? Oh, when, I didn't even know he'd put a new one out, to be honest. <laughs> it's called Everything's Electric. Everything's Electric. Oh, really? When did that come out? Um, I think two, two and a half weeks ago. Oh, okay, I, I honestly actually haven't heard of it. I have because the thing is, I don't really listen to the radio anymore. Because um, so and I don't follow him on um, any sort of social media, so I actually haven't heard it yet. But um, I will definitely give that a, a listen because I have both his solo albums and the um, BDI was his other band. Yeah, yeah. was it the same? Was it different? Oh. Yeah. BDI were every time when I first when BDI first came out and I mm. put the, the uh, different gear still speeding I think was the first album with the yeah. crocodile and stuff on the front. Mm -hmm. I listened to it and one mate was like, "Oh, what do you think? It's really good." And I went, "You know what it's lacking?" And I went, "What?" And I went, "No." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and but then the second album was not as good. Mm. But then Liam did his first album, which was all right. But then his last album, Why Me, Why Not, was just. It's mm. almost like he's returned to, yeah, mid oasis kind of mm -hmm. um, songwriting, and there's some great yeah. songs on there. No, but I yeah, agree. everything's electric. In the mm. words of Liam Gallagher, it is biblical. 
yeah oh really <laughs> i will give it a listen um yeah i remember actually being really surprisingly impressed with his second solo album because um, yeah. his first one was, i didn't mind his first one it's actually got my favorite solo song of his on the um all the glass song i really like that song yeah um but yeah, the album was a bit of a mixed bag, but the second one was really good. I quite like the live one that he released last year or the year before. Yeah, at, um, Royal Albert Hall, I think, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, that know. was good. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit behind because although we can stream them and get them on Spotify mm -hmm. and everything now, I still get the physical copies. Yeah. like It's a bit like we've got all this stuff for Netflix, but we still buy it, don't we, you yeah. know, movie-wise? Um, but I always make sure that I get physical copies of being Oasis Noel Gallagher yeah. or Liam Gallagher. I mm -hmm. haven't got his uh, Royal Albert Hall one yet. I mm -hmm. haven't got Noel's best of. Um, mm -hmm. But I am contemplating getting Liam's new one on vinyl. Um, mm -hmm. Because obviously I've got a finally got a record player yeah. now. Um, <laughs> not that I get a chance to kind of um, use it. Mm. Uh, because when the kids aren't there, I'm like, I'll watch films. Yeah. And when the wife's there, I'll put it on, she goes, it's too loud. So yeah. but what we I didn't tell you this is that the record player that we got, Mm. Well, I got it was a free cycle. So this woman had it since 1980 when she bought it brand new. Oh, okay. Um, and it came with those uh, speakers where you know you got to like press it and you push one wire and one like. Oh yeah, I've got that. Yeah, mine's like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but one of the speakers was crackly, mm -hmm. so I could only use it through one speaker. But I've got my sound bar, but mm -hmm. there's no way you can fit in the sound bar. So me, so I showed me dad, and my dad went away, and he made this. Um, wire so it went in the orcs in the back of the sound, sound bar mm -hmm. and, it, and it attached two wires to it so now it comes out the sound bar oh nice which is, oh, is pretty cool. cool yeah um but yeah so so that that record player there downstairs is two mm -hmm. years younger than me so it's what 42 year he'll be 42 years old when she got it because one said she bought it moved yeah. to belgium and moved mm -hmm. back to the uk and she just doesn't use it so i got yeah. it for free whereas mm -hmm. if you I, I know you can probably get a better record players the more money that you pay for it. Yeah. Um, but as I said to you last time, I really want to get stuff on vinyl. Mm. The funniest thing yeah. was when my dad came and he put the wires in the back and it worked it was like, great. The moment your dad and I look at that John Lennon, give me some truth album and vinyl. Mm. I'm like, all oh, right, it's 40 quid, you know. I'm like, yeah. She goes, but we're going to get it for you. I'm like, oh, thanks for Christmas. <laughs> I'm like, that's 10 months away. I'm not saying, oh, I don't want to sound ungrateful. Yeah. That sounds like a bit of a knob, but I'm just like, that's 10 months away. But, uh, <laughs> but thanks. She goes, yeah. I'll get it for your birthday. I'm going to say, well, that's still 10 months away. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's great. But I mean, it's good. Like, vinyl for me is just, I love vinyl. vinyl. I've got all of the Oasis and solo Oasis stuff on vinyl. And Noel actually done for his Who Built the Moon album. He released every song as a 12 inch on like a picture color color disc okay i like i even bought all of them <laughs> so there's things like that where i get jealous and we could fall out because i didn't have that at the time although yeah. i went through the garage um and i found loads of like singles i had one album which is the art of the monkey's second album which had been i think did i tell you this last time i can't remember if it did I think you I think you mentioned it that you had the an Arctic Monkeys one, I think. Yeah, so Favourite Worst Nightmare, which was their second mm. album, which is where after that they went shit. Yeah. But that was just still sealed because I just mm. I bought the C D, I bought the, yeah. the the vinyl. So I put that on. Um and then I found John Lennon had a re release of Happy Christmas War is over with the B side of Imagine, which was in like a which is on like a green um vinyl. And mm. I've got um Another band I'll come into shortly. Um, they've got their two, their two um, singles I've got on vinyl has their kind of logo on it. There's a whole circle. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a keen bed shaped, I think, uh, vinyl. And then mm -hmm. uh, Turing Breaks, I got their album, their single signed when I was in HMV many years ago. I'm looking on the back there and I'm going, this is like 2002, mm -hmm. 2004. I'm like, you'd be like, 12 or something whereas that well, like yeah you know, uh, 2004 i would have been oh god how old would i have been seven or eight <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay I'll, I'll half that then yeah and i'm like i've never played these i've even got like um i found i remember ages ago we went on a um uh, what's it not a barge is it a barge you know like you go on the norfolk broads what are those is it a... no it's not you know um, the boats the big long oh 
Um, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But I'm, yeah, I'm so, so, so letting the river ooze to go on that, and I pulled over, yeah. pulled over to that car. We parked up. No, it's still not a car. We moored up, uh, and I went because Charlotte Hadley released her debut single, and there were limited edition mm -hmm. signed copies. So I tried to find in, in the city of York this thing, and I and I got it. So Charlotte Hadley it used to be the lead guitarist or room guitarist for Ash when they became a four piece for a while. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You heard of Ash? Um, I haven't. I can't lie. <laughs> okay. So the girl the songs uh, "Girl from Mars." Mm -hmm. You know that one? Um, it does ring a bell. Burn, baby, bell. burn. Yeah, no, no one. Yeah, no, that song. Okay. <laughs> so, so she was like, she came in for a bit, and, and then she did like a little solo thing, and I got so I found it. So they're all there signed, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, cool. I want to have a chance to play them. But yeah, it's like the yeah. sound bar. The wife yeah. says to me the day, she goes, well, I can tell that the kids are over at your parents. I'm like, why? Because she says the floor is shaking because as soon as they're out, you put the sound bar on and now things start shaking. And yeah. Everything. yeah. But I'm, I am liking the fact of getting still not into my music listening wise as I used to be. Mm, because yeah. I, because I would normally listen to music when I'll be driving to work or previous to that, where I used to get, um, when I was in my own flat, I used to get the Metro from Whitley Bay into um, Gosforth and that. So mm -hmm. Metro in Newcastle is a bit like the underground in London. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to listen on there with my little, I didn't have an iPod. I had a, another one. I don't mm -hmm. know what, what make it was. It was similar to iPod. No, no, I had, no, that was it. The mum had got me an MP3 player, but it broke. So they refunded it, and we got the iPod a lot cheaper um, than that one. And I just remember listening to that all the time, just Art Monkeys, all the stuff. Got my yeah. parents, download all the kind of like unreleased Art and Monkey stuff, Milburn, yeah. bands like that, put it on there. And I just used to listen to it all and all the time. It just kind of, but now I don't get a chance to. Yeah. I just miss that listening to music business. Yeah, I mean, I tend to do most of my listening now when I'm in my car. Like, if I have to drive about in London, I'll just, like, pop on an album or something. I never get time to sit down as much as I used to now um, and play a record, and I do miss it, I must say, because it's, like, funny enough, it's very rare I get a new album nowadays, but, like, um, there's a there's a singer I like called um, Aurora, and I, I, I love her. I went to see her at the Roundhouse last year, um, and, like, her new album come out, uh, uh, the vinyl come out this week uh, or last week. I got it on Friday and I got like a signed copy of it. I got, I went out and got this package deal purely because I wanted the signature, but it was like, oh, if you want the signature on the vinyl, it comes with a CD and a cassette. So I got a CD and a cassette of the album as well. But I still haven't had a chance to sit down and play the vinyl. I've played it on Spotify, but... <laughs> So what's Aurora then? I haven't heard. It. Is it just she a solo artist or? Yeah, she's pretty new. She's um, uh, she's a bit quirky. She's a Norwegian singer, and um, it's not normally my style of music. Cause it's got a very modern sound to it, but I don't know. I I, I think I discovered her in 2019, and um, something about her voice just really, really sat with me well. So I fell in love with her. I went went to her at the Roundhouse. I got to sign a record um and yeah i've got she's only got three albums but she's got an ep as well which is really good so so is it like bjork-esque kind of music yeah it sort of actually is yeah bjork's a good one to compare it to she's a bit more of a, a lively I, I don't really want to compare her to billy eilish because i don't want to put you off um <laughs> but... well to be fair billy eilish has done one song which is quite good and that's purely only because it was on james bond so i'll, I'll give her that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I don't mind Billie Eilish, but I, I think this Aurora is a lot better. But um, anyway, I mean, there's a few comments here if we want to go through a few yeah, of these. Let's, let's see crack on, see around. who's there, see who's in. Um, oh, before I bring this one up, actually, um, <laughs> Mr. Blu ray Bullet Brit is here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Um, and what dead musician would you have most liked to see live? I think she, I think it means live. Oh yeah, sorry, I read that too quick. <laughs> I do that a lot. I do that on my let's, stream with Ryan. Let's just bring like, everybody yeah. back to life. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Right, yeah, Amadeus, you're back, Mozart. Yep, bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I feel like I've got to go with Bowie. I really was upset that I didn't get to see him live because I sort of just got into going and see people live in like 2015 and I was like right I saw McCartney I was like Bowie next and then of course the next year he died so 
Uh, I think for me, um, if I could have seen any artist uh, who's passed away, who's live, would probably be John Lennon. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see John Lennon live. Um, mm. And I wouldn't say I'm his biggest fan, but I think he would put on a good live show, which would probably be Jimi Hendrix. I would love yeah. mm-hmm. to see Jimi just yeah. riffing the hell out of, out of a guitar. I think that yeah. would be outstanding. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Or he could just have Jimmy on lead guitar and John Lennon on his piano and rhythm. Yeah, that, you know, that, that, that would be pretty way. awesome to be fair. Yeah, or we on backing single, backing, yeah. and then we'd have um, I forgot the guy out the who now the drummer. What was his name? Oh, Keith Moon. Keith Moon. Yeah, Keith Moon on drums. Hmm. We do all that. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I think for me it would probably be John Lennon, uh, and purely because of being a big fan of John Lennon, but hmm. as a as a musical spectacle, I would go and see Jimi Hendrix because I think hmm. it would take. The roof off if his music which it was there now kind of would got released now mm-hmm. but with a modern modern version of his stuff i think it would just be yeah amazing no i completely agree it would have been it, 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 you know it, it's it's uh hendrix is such a shame because what he only had i'm not sure how many years he was like on the scenes for but it weren't many at all was it he only got like three or four albums out if that well, I think it's he's, he's part, isn't he part of the 27 club? All these um, singers who died at the age of 27. Oh, was it? So it was him. Oh. Was it Amy Winehouse? And yes, then, I know um, Amy Winehouse was there. Who else? There was um, um, oh. Kurt Cobain. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how old Jim Morrison was. He might have been 27. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm thinking about it. I think you're right. He probably... I think he, he was around. Well, I know he was young, so I, I would guess that, yeah, he probably is a part of that 27 club. Um, but, yeah, it's a shame. He's a fantastic musician. I've got I've got two of his albums, and I, I haven't played them much, admittedly. I'm not I'm not a big expert on Jimi Hendrix at all. Oh, no. but, um, I, I really enjoy both those records. All along the Watchtower, his version of Dylan is, I think, is better than Dylan's. Ooh, maybe, maybe, yeah. I like them both a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just like this because he's obviously took it. And he just took that, did that spin on it, and it was mm. just, yeah. Well, it's yeah. a classic now, isn't it? I think the people who go all along Watchtower will probably more go towards Jimmy than they would go to Dylan. I think. I think so. I think a lot of people will be like that with Dylan nowadays. So I think I don't know what it like. I love Dylan, um, but I feel like a lot of his early stuff, it's because it's just him and an acoustic. I feel like in terms of like modern listeners, I think a lot of people would prefer covers of Dylan stuff, as horrible as that sounds, because. I always much I'd always rather listen to Dylan most of the time because I just think hearing him sing is something special. But I can sort of see why a lot of modern listeners wouldn't get along with Dylan too much. True. But I mean, if you listen to Subterranean Homesick Blues and repeat, you'd get into Dylan. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> I love that song. It is just I mean, I'm not a massive Dylan fan. I am a fan of his early work, like All mm-hmm. on Watchtower, The Rolling Stone, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um but Subterranean Homesick Blues is, is epic. And Everybody Wants to Get Stoned, classic. Yeah, <laughs> that is a really good song, actually. I, to be fair with Dylan, I go up to, I do 60s and 70s, really good for me. And then I just feel like from there on, you really have to pick and choose. Because you went electric, that was it. That was a Dylan stage, wasn't it? You just went yeah. electric, and after that, it was kind of... Yeah, yeah. Every time he done a good one, it seemed there was a not-so-good album waiting around the corner. <laughs> That's how I found, because I think it... Oh, this this was a while ago. This must have been like 2014 or 15. I went through and bought every single Dylan album in order. So I like bought okay. the, the first debut, listened to that, and then I got Times They Are Changing was the second one, I think. I, I, I bought that one, then I bought Highway, Bring It All Back Home, Blonde on Blonde, blah, 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 blah. Um, and yeah, I, after the 60s and 70s, I just found that every time I heard a good album, I was then, I knew I was probably going to get a dodgy one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a bit like Oasis. They did it, they middle to good, and then just kind mm. of like Standing the Shoulder of Giants has about three good songs on it. Yeah. <laughs> and then kind of middle, it kind of faded out, but they're up and down. Then also yeah. was excellent. And then he just went. But then again, you got to think, he came out mid 60s. And then mm. the, as, as the album, the times are changing. So he's he has to go along with. Mm-hmm. what's going on because Jimi yeah. Hendrix is coming in you know you've got all these all these uh like punks coming in and, and electric guitars are being more prominent he has to obviously yeah. adapt his music to the to the um to the year but, uh, yeah. 
I mean, I think it's a good because I, you know, um, in comparison, someone that my nan absolutely loves, Cliff Richard, did not change to the times, and look at his reputation now. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Knows. My auntie randomly really loves Cliff Richard, and I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I, really I mean, my my it. nan was my nan was in his class at school, so we all okay. say that's the only reason you like him. But, <laughs> I, but I I think the thing is with Cliff because I when I was really into music when I was younger, I did listen to him a little bit because my nan loved him. I listened to a couple of hits, but he's one of those guys that just didn't change with the times. He was he's still doing rock and roll today, and it's like it it doesn't work anymore. I don't think his his act. You know, wide for sound though, not classic. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I always remember Cliff Richard off um, Max and Paddy's Road to Nowhere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the guy they meet in prison. Yeah, and here we go. I'm Cliff. I'm for tennis boy. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that clip actually. <laughs> that is just because the wife always goes to me. Oh, hi there. Hi, I'm Cliff. I can't, I'm not even going to attempt to do the accent, the, the, the voice. Oh no, I think you should. <laughs> no, that's not. It's embarrassing enough. Yeah. Um, discussing cliff richard let's not yeah. try and do impressions no, at the same time yeah let's we'll go on to someone else here um <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the first song you heard and loved it ever since you first heard it mm. probably I mean, from my yeah. perspective mm-hmm. i would say a heartache on me oh okay because mm-hmm. that That's was the good. first vinyl i bought as a single was that mm-hmm. the first album i bought was roland rat but I don't yeah. think that kind of counts <laughs> as, as, a, as like a, and I was rolling rats cassette tape of the album or something like that. But yeah, the first single I bought was um, a hard take on me. Mm-hmm. God knows what year that was. 82, 84, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know for me. I, I feel like in my head, the one that I went to first, I'm going to say, because this is a song that got me into music in general, and it's 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 you know it's it's not a masterpiece by any means, but I still remember just my dad playing Madness Baggy Trousers, and I was okay. like, right, all of a sudden I was like, because I I never really cared for music before I went into like my secondary school or anything. I think I heard that song and was like, right, I want to hear more from this band, and then I went from Madness to the Beatles, and I went from the Beatles to everything else. So I sort of feel like that's the song that sort of started it all for me. And I still like it to today when it comes on, when I'm down the pub, my mates or something, it's always a good, good, good tune. So <laughs> I thought you were going to say something like too unlimited, get ready for this. And I was going to go, okay. Yeah. No. That's, a, that's a good way. That's a good way to start. Yeah. No, that's my I, lyrics. I, <laughs> uh, no, but I, I don't know what it is. Madness just always sort of stuck with me. You know, they're like my first band and they're just very easy listening. Yeah. My friends, when I was, a, I didn't really probably listen to, to Madness when I was younger until I went to uni. Yeah. Uh, and, and the lads who were there, one was from Southampton, one was from Tame. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they loved Madness, but I, I, I couldn't get away with it because it was too, and this is going to, this is going to be the, like the divide, but it was too mm-hmm. Southern for me. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, 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 yeah. And I, I just, I just, so I've, I've never been a fan of Madness. I can see why people mm-hmm. are fans of madness mm-hmm. um i always remember them coming on the radio the day i got dumped and it was mm. must be love must be love and i was just like oh that's nice yeah they, should, they fl- yeah, the radio tied that well for you jesus <laughs> yeah. the thing is though i then changed the channel and mm. it was scissor sisters with the song laura oh and my right, ex- yeah. the girlfriend who dumped me was called laura so i went yeah. from it must be love to them singing about my ex-girlfriend's name and i thought that's absolutely brilliant thanks yeah. for that it's cheered <laughs> me up no end <laughs> Oh, I feel like it's like, like, like the thing in um, Shaun the Dead. Dead. Yeah, I was like, who oh, put this on? <laughs> it's on random. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh. What song was that? It was. Um... Uh, was it If You Leave Me Now? Is it that one? Yeah, if You Leave Me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know what it is about, about this. I've still got. Hang on. It's right here, right next to me. This is my dad's CD. This is from 2009. My dad got this when it came out, and this is what started off my musical journey, the CD here. So I've, I've kept it in my room, but, and it comes, this is great, because it comes with, you got the CD, and then falls out like that, and you got a DVD on the other side of all the music videos. So I used to sit there at night watching that DVD for like hours. <laughs> 
Uh, funny enough, I only figured out the other day that my Oasis Time Fly CD actually mm. had a DVD in it. Oh, really? And I, didn't, I didn't. And I've had it for like eight years or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think somebody put something on YouTube or something. I was like, mm -hmm. does mine come with a DVD? Hang on a minute. Mm. And I went, yeah, there it is. It's got yeah. all the music videos in it. I did not even know. That's you... why I just get them and put them away. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really normally the biggest fan of music videos. I've been the reason that I always liked the Madness one so much is because they were just weird in it, like you know, they're just like flying around with saxophones and stuff. And it's like, it's <laughs> but... a hard take on me. Their music video was awesome. Mm. You've seen that one because it's a I cartoon one, yeah. and then real life, and then I, I, I kind of like. I, I don't know with music videos. I think I just like it when they go really weird with it. Like Peter Gabriel obviously had a load of great ones. Um, that Hammer was awesome because it was all fast, wasn't it? Yeah, that one was great. So. I, yeah, I, I I like music videos when they're weird. <laughs> I've discovered. Yes. yes, I agree with that. Yeah, mm. because he just like like Michael Jackson's "Leave mm -hmm. Me Alone" when he's on that roller yeah. coaster and, mm -hmm. he's, and he dances with the elephant That's man cool. and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, music videos aren't on like they used to be. This would be so much better. And obviously, no. the Beatles were technically the first band to have a music video when they did "Hard Day's Night," because the only proper mm -hmm. one that was made after that was "Bohemian Rhapsody" for Queen, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's it's a bit weird that you know music videos actually took so long to come on. I suppose the thing is though, where did they show them back then? I don't know when Top of the Pops come about. I'm seventies. Seventies, yeah. I mean, obviously that was before I was born. It was out. I was born yeah. in seventy eight. So I'm I'm so, guessing before then it was like, well, where do you show a music video? <laughs> the best thing is now though, on a Saturday night, I'm flicking through the things with watching Ant and Deck or whatever we're gonna, mm -hmm. you know, represent with the boys on a Saturday night. Um, and I flip through and, and BBC Two is or BBC Three normally has Top of the Pops or whatever, and yeah. you put it on and you're like, oh my god, I remember, oh god, yeah, I remember. Then you got all the different clothing yeah. they were wearing. It's you know, and you had pans people who used to do mm -hmm. they didn't couldn't get the artists on, they used to do all the dancing to the music yeah. instead. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, my, my dad watches it a lot and I'll come back from the pub on a Saturday night, like ten o'clock, and I'll sit down in the front room and be like, Oh, you know, there's Billy Joel or Elton John or whatever. I'm like, oh that's good. And then someone else will come on, they'll be wearing something, and I'll just look at my dad and go, What the fuck kind of decade did you live in? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so funny about dressing. I still kind of, I don't think I do now, but mm -hmm. I still kind of dress like it was the 90s. I yeah. think my, music, my my clothing taste is very 90s. You know, mm -hmm. even said to the missus the other day, I said, oh, fancy getting, I haven't had a pair of combat trousers in ages. I thought, yeah. like, oh, I don't mind getting a pair of them. Mm -hmm. I said, I remember this one pair I had, I think it was being by Airwalk, they were like a beigey cream color. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, I used to wear them all through uni and I got holes and I had to throw them up. The, but my favorite ones, but yeah. yeah, everything nineties now. It's not still wearing my Adidas top, like early Oasis. Yeah. If I get a jacket, it has to be like with the collar up to here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like it sounds really bad. You know, I would never. I mean, obviously, I had my hair long. It just mm -hmm. goes like down here, like proper Oasis and all that. Um, I mean, I, I see people now and the hair I, like I that. I'm just like, yeah, I don't. I think fashion's quite boring today, personally. I mean, I know that there's some very odd fashion choices which happened. No, don't get me sort of because I get told a lot of times, even before. Well, actually, I think it's more so now with having two kids. I get told I've got dad jokes, and I'm like, when we were in the office, because I'm home working mm -hmm. at the minute. Like, lasses come in with the ripped jeans, and I mm -hmm. go to get a third off them. And I go, yeah. why? I go, because you got holes in them. It's the fashion yeah. point. I'm like, really? You're yeah. getting less material, and you're paying more for it to get hold. Yeah. At that point, I'm like, God, I'm old. I'm starting yeah. to sound. Oh, old. to be fair, I've I've never got the whole buying ripped jeans stuff. It's like oh, men wearing tight jeans. What's that all about? <laughs> I know what you mean. It's um, yeah. Um, the fashion sense today has definitely gone down here. I must admit. <laughs> Turtlenecks as well. Christ. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yes. Sorry, we're, we're deviating, of course. But yes, I could be here all day. We, yeah. we should do. We just should do a live stream of me just whinging about things I hate in society. We should, we should do like everything. We've done music. We'll do fashion next. We'll do food at some point as well. <laughs> the, the things that that annoy Magpie movies are a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> are a lot of things. But music wise, Scooter they annoy the shit out of me because they are so shit, but have a massive fan base. I'm trying to think of who annoys me musically. Yeah, I, I really don't like Taylor Swift. I really can't stand her. Um, Anything I'm to... that's our class is being fabricated. So, mm. 
like uh, One Direction. I, f- I hate One Direction. Mm-hmm. Anything that came on the X Factor, and I was like, oh, I love this song, like Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Mm-hmm. No one, apart from the decade it came in, or a few people remembered that song. It came on X Factor, and everyone's like, and it's on everywhere, and I yeah. can't stand that song. The same with um, Black Eyed Peas and um, oh, Get This Party Started or whatever. Yeah, I, like, I, get this I, part- I get it. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Uh, it is it is weird. And, uh, it, I must admit, I do have the app on my phone, and I just look for it when I'm bored at work sometimes. But that TikTok, I think, is awful. They'll bring back a song that everyone's using on TikTok and everyone are using it and it gets plastered all over the radio again. And then after a week, you're like, oh my God, what? Ha- I wish they hadn't discovered this song. Like they, they discovered a Billy Joel song, Zanzibar, like last year at some point. And I used to really like that song, but it got so overplayed and I got so bored of hearing it the last year. I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't listen to this song. <laughs> what, what Going on to what annoys me is when it comes to Oasis, I'm a bit of a snob. Now, mm. It's almost like I don't want to sound like I'm a know it all because I don't know everything about Oasis and mm-hmm. the background. I mean, I knew they were called The Rain and then Noel came in, comes all the way, whatever, and the, and the rest is history. But no word of a lie, I came home from the Chinese, got the takeaway because the kids weren't here, came in, and the wife's doing it and goes, She was talking with you. I goes, Fuming. She's like, Why? Because I was sitting there in the Chinese waiting for it to come, and this new this couple were over in the corner and they're going through the wedding songs. And they're like, oh, I've got to have some Oasis songs on. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, come on, have Wonderwall, uh, Don't Look Back on Anger, and Champagne Supernova. I'm like, all right, why don't you just pick the ones which are the most radio-friendly instead of having some proper ones? And he went, what about Live Forever? Never heard of it. I'm like, what? <laughs> and my head's going, and my head's going, <laughs> yeah. And I keep, and Annie's like, you've stopped got to be in a snow about Oasis. I'm like, but you can't just go, oh, it just, it just, I yeah. could see myself just, about to explode and go over them to right. If you're gonna do away songs, you need to do maybe I don't know, uh, fucking in the bushes, uh, yeah. go let it out. How about Hindu Times is a great one, uh, Idler's Dream, uh, how about some B sides, Acquiesce? There's some good ones. Don't go for the ones that you've heard on the radio, anyway. Yes, so well, it reminds me actually of when I was somewhere with my nan, I think we were we were in Great Yarmouth or somewhere like that. Um, and I was talking, we were just talking about our Beatles songs, and then like my we got talking to um, the, the guy in the queue for wherever we were queuing up for, and he was like, "Oh, those songs you were listening, what are they?" And we're like, oh, "Well, they're Beatles songs." He's like, "Oh, honestly, I don't think I could tell you a single Beatles song." I'm like, I'm "Like, okay, <laughs> it's like I, I get not everyone's a Beatles fan, but you can't name like Hey Jude or Let It Be." <laughs> so. not, well, even my daughters have come in here before yeah. I worked from home and I had the thing on and they loved Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I've mm-hmm. got videos of them singing Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah. And so there would have been about three and six or something. And I'm, I think at that moment you heard the Beatles more but before I did. I didn't hear the Beatles till I was 15, 16. You're hearing them at the ages of whatever you are. Yeah. But for somebody to turn around and go, I've never heard a Beatles song. I'm like, sorry, which, which rock have you been under? Mm, you know, yeah. probably yeah. It- the biggest band that ever was and if it yeah. wasn't for them you wouldn't have bands these days no. i i remember that really just taking me by surprise i'm like yeah i just i just feel like a grown man i was like physically i just don't believe you <laughs> i mean i could i could relate to the fact that when i said to you last time listen to this person as that person because i know that you wouldn't have heard them because more obscure mm-hmm. kind of music but the beatles yeah it's like singing somebody naming elvis presley song mm-hmm. they probably could i mean I could name probably about five, if that, mm-hmm. because I'm not a big Elvis fan. But yeah. I would still have that knowledge to know yeah. it and not, not be blinkered. But if you ask me any kind of dance songs, I'd be like, no, because that's just noise. Again, <laughs> sounding like a mold. Yeah. No, I, I I get where you're coming from, though, because even like Elvis, not like yourself not being a big fan, it's like, well, you still got those five or so, five to ten songs, whatever, which are, you know, massive, huge hits and stuff you know everyone knows them exactly fucking idiots yeah. the last time we got that chinese place fucking knock them out. <laughs> uh, the next question is um i got a record player at christmas and i'm addicted to buying um them already spent way too much money the last few months buying vinyls um yeah, yeah i must admit i mean people know from my old channel and stuff i got 
I was hugely addicted to buying vinyl for a good three years. <laughs> I've slowed down a lot, but I still get my favourites, like I say. Um, i got Aurora's new album. If McCartney reissues anything, I'll buy it because I buy anything that man does. Um, there's a few other artists I really like today. Where I'll still like if Noel or Liam release a, an album, I'll be over that. So, except the single because he didn't know it came out. Yeah, no. I pop. <laughs> if he releases it as a 12 inch vinyl, I'll buy it because I don't really do seven inch singles because I just got nowhere to put them. But the 12 inch vinyls, I just sort of log with my records. So, yeah. I didn't realise, because obviously I was blinking and wasn't into it, how expensive, I think we discussed this last time, how expensive mm. vinyl records actually are. But then yeah. the new Liam one, which is coming out in May, is 20 quid. And I'm like, that's not bad. Yeah. I don't mind that. I mean, I looked at the Lock Lo the Lock Loman, the Nebworth Live one, mm -hmm. um, even though I've already got the CD and the DVD yeah. and the Blu-ray of mm -hmm. it. Um, I was like, oh, I'll get on back. 35 quid. I was like, no, you're right. Yeah. See, I, I really wanted to get the soundtrack to Tick, Tick, Boom because it was one of my favourite films last year and I adored the soundtrack. Like, the songs, I'm still playing them in my car every now and then. But the soundtrack on vinyl is like £35. It's like, I don't have it in me to pay that. <laughs> the only funny thing is, though, 20 or so years ago, you'd go for a DVD and there'd be 14 to 20 quid for a DVD mm -hmm. because that was the thing. Yeah. And then now they're about a quid. Well, they are a quid, mm. if not less, right? Yeah. Vinyls 10, 15 years ago would have been about the same price. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, they've shot up, whereas DVDs mm. have gone down. But I think it's going to be Dad said as well. It's like the, the produced less because CDs in the market. Mm. Yeah. So that so that's why, the, 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 well, I don't know. I don't even know if CDs are doing that well anymore. Like, because I think just streaming is just dominating everything again. So my, my new car, I ain't even got a CD player. I said to my dad oh. the other day when my Aurora package came, I was like, oh, I'll just chuck the CD in my car. Completely forgetting my car doesn't have a CD player. <laughs> I know. It's, it's the same because with the Focus I had before the Kia, mm. the, uh, that had a CD player. So when I emptied the, 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 uh, the Focus when we sold it, I've actually got a bag for life full of just copied CDs that I had in the car. I'm just like, mm. how many CDs did I have in the yeah. car? And they're just in the garage. So yeah. I got into that one. It took me about, because straight away I was just, all right, put my iPhone on, plug it in, Spotify, stream it, great. It took about two weeks to realise it didn't have a CD player because mm -hmm. I was straight onto that. Um, but yeah, if, if if I run out of signal or don't have Spotify, then I'm not good. Because that means I'll have to listen to listen to the radio. The wife, she's obviously yeah. like four years young, not obviously, but she's four years younger than me. Mm -hmm. She listens to Radio 1 and I don't listen to Radio 1 because it's, it's just... I think I'm like, I always say to her, I'm trying to get down with the kids, listen to Radio One. She's yes. like, No, I just like the music. I'm like, All right, here's me with me, bloody Absolute Radio 90s. Or, oh, I'm always listening to Absolute. <laughs> um, or Radio BBC Radio 2. Yeah. And I'm like, At what point did I get old? I'm just like, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's getting ridiculous now, my age. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I do uh, like. I, I think we spoke about this the last time. There are still a few modern things that come through that I like. Like, I, I I'm not a fan of One Direction, but I actually do like Harry Styles solo stuff. Yeah, you discussed this last time. I told you about this. Don't bring this up. You lose subscribers. <laughs> There's a few things like that that sneak through where I'm like, that's 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 pretty good. Um, and, you know, I, I, I know they're getting older a bit now, but I like things like Keen. They have a very modern sound to them. So, um, but... To Keen, I went on their debut tour. Oh, really? I went to see them on their debut tour, yeah. I went, I've only got their first album. Well, um, that's the best one. But to me, I, uh, yeah, that's not to discredit their others. I actually really like all their albums. Um, but their first one is just... Uh, it's... I'd honestly probably give it a 10 out of 10. I think it's perfect. I adore their first album. I think what it was, was I did this thing where I went out and I randomly, when I worked at Northern Rock before Northern Rock went under. Yeah. And it was like five minutes walk up the high street and there's Smiths and the Woolworths mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, and I went and randomly bought an album. If it, mm. As long as I knew it was indie or guitar based, yeah. I'd give it a go. And I bought Star Sailors, Love Is Here, debut album, the day it got released, because I used to weekly buy Enemy, so I knew it was coming out, and it got a high rating. And I listened to Star Sailor, and I said, like, oh, my God, that guy's voice is awesome. And then because Tom out of Keen's voice is very similar, that's how I got mm. into Keen. 
But I yeah. always remember the quote of Noel Gallagher saying, the biggest arseholes and dickheads in a band is either the singer, the keyboardist, or the drummer. He goes, which is basically Keen. And yes. I always remember that quote that he did, which is quite funny. Um, yeah. But I I love all this stuff. I just don't, like nowadays, it just doesn't seem this. I love Star Sailor. I think mm. Star Sailor, uh, I always forget that I like Star Sailor. And I listened yeah. to their album again, I'm just like, oh my God, they're fucking awesome. It, do you know what? I do love that when I rediscover an album. Like, um, it happened quite recently with me, but I can't remember what bloody album it was now off the top of my head. I think it might have been a Lindsay Buckingham one, so I really like his solo stuff. I think it was um, his 2012 album. It was called Seeds We Sow. And not many people listen to Lindsay's solo stuff outside of Fleetwood. Um, but I loved this album when it came out in 2012, and I went back and played it, I think, about a month ago. I, I honestly haven't heard it since about 2015, maybe even 2014. And it was it, just amazing hearing it again. And I love like, that. If a new drink, I always remember when Sprite first, God, age Paul, mm -hmm. I remember when Sprite first came out and my nana, mm -hmm. I said, oh, I like it. And she just, every time I got it, oh, there's another bottle of Sprite. Oh, there's another bottle of Sprite. There's another yeah. bottle. And I got sick of it. Mm -hmm. But now I'll go back to it and go, oh, I get seven, I'm yeah. not Brandon here, but I get seven up now instead of Sprite because I feel the flavour always reminds me of holidays mm -hmm. because seven up is holidays. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit like an album. You listen to it and you play it to death and you leave it for a couple yeah. of years or whatever and you go back. It'll be like um, Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory. I listened to that to absolute death. Mm -hmm. I love that album. And then I didn't, and I listened to it again last year and I was just like, oh my God. It's the same with Star Sailor's Dave album, Love Is Here. Mm -hmm. The things like a waste I can't go back to and go because I've listened I'd listened to them for so long. I can't just go back and go, yeah. Oh, I listen to definitely maybe. Oh, I forgot I really like that because I yeah. know I really like that. You know, yeah. but with Star Sailor Love is here, it, it is it's like probably dash another um there was a MTV unplugged of Dashboard Confessional. Mm -hmm. Um they did a uh, the second album, I think. And I listen to that constantly. Yeah. But that's the one that I can go back in and rediscover and go, it's easy listening because it's all acoustic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I feel a lot with a lot of Keen stuff, to be honest. I find that all just really easy listening. You know, it's mostly piano based. And I just feel like Tom Chaplin's got a really easy voice to listen to. So they're always kind of. Star Sailor. Like... If you like Tom's, if you like Keen's voice, you should listen to Star Sailor. Yeah. That's not me giving you recommendations because you've probably heard of Star Sailor anyway, but. I just yeah, I've heard a few of their songs before. Because it was randomly, I think it was away somewhere, and I and I found I saw that uh, James Walsh, the lead singer, was on Twitter. So I thought, oh, send him a few tweets. Mm. I had like this full thirty-minute conversation on Twitter. I was just like, oh really? Didn't expect that. No. That was about five six years ago. And I messaged him last week, and I went because he supports Liverpool. I'm just like, I was messaging him and going, oh, blah, 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 but how's Liverpool? Oh, we've got to take. Never replied. Now I'm like, oh, you bastard. All right, yeah. okay, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, you had your five minutes chat with us, Paul. You're not yeah. having any more. I know what you mean, though. You do get a buzz. I mean, I, I, Tom Chaplin liked one of my tweets once. I didn't get a conversation, but he liked it, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, but similar is that I absolutely adored Gail Porter when I was at mm -hmm. uni. Yeah. When she had a picture up against the um, House of Parliament when she did yeah. um, FHM. Mm -hmm. I got a calendar. Every magazine she was in, I got. And then she married, I think it was Dan from Top Loader, I think the guitarist. Okay. And then obviously she got alopecia and then she's gone downhill and all that. Um, and then randomly, I, I think it was me and the missus went shopping and I put something on there, re-watching dead famous TV show with Gail Porter, still a hottie or whatever. And she liked it. And I was like, <sighs> she liked it. Yeah. Like, I know you've got no hair, but I probably still would, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think oh, even Joey Barton once replied, didn't reply to me. No, I did. He, Joey Barton replied to me once when he used to play for Newcastle, and I was just like, "Oh, oh!" And and then I'm I'm going to go off tangent a bit, but it's kind of music related. I was at work about six years ago, and I got a Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. off my ex-girlfriend, who I hadn't spoken to in five, six years. Mm -hmm. And she went, hi, just looked at your friend's Instagram picture. Is that Sam Smith with him? And at that point I went, <clears throat> I was just like, right, don't <laughs> me. I was just like, yes, that is Sam Smith with him. Because Anton, who got married, in case you didn't know, mm. to his cousin, Emily. So yes, 
That is Sam Smith. And I met him when he was at the wedding and he sang there. Thanks very much. Bye. And at that point, I was like, hmm, I couldn't. Yeah. Then, but then, then they go through her Instagram page and she's just like, oh, I love Sam Smith. I love Sam Smith. Oh, I love all this Sam Smith. I'm just like, what if it stuck with me and we're a cheating two time face cow? You would have met him at my best mate's wedding. <laughs> that's, that's that's pretty good there. I like that. <laughs> and all my mates were, she's trying to get back with you. I'm just like, no, she's not. She just realized that she made a bad judgment call. Yeah. <laughs> You know. Yeah, well, hey, I think I would have enjoyed doing that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So uh, there's an interesting question here, actually. Um, I'm not going to be too good at answering this one because I haven't seen many movies with musicians in, to be honest. But what's your favourite okay. acting performance by a musician? I mean, I feel like i got to cheat and say something like maybe... A Star Is Born, Lady Gaga. I can't really think of any of the old classic musicians that I love that are great well, in movies because normally they weren't great. Like the old Elvis movies and the old Beatles movies, they, they're not great actors. <laughs> I'm trying to think of musicians who are actors. You're right, there's Elvis. And John mm-hmm. Lennon was in the 60s with How I Won the War, which I'm still yet to watch. Um, the Beatles, obviously, Hard Day's Night, technically were acting in that and Help yeah. and Magical oh, Mystery yeah. Tour. Bobby was pretty good in Labyrinth, I'll say. The Starman is was it Starman? No, it wasn't Starman. Uh, Man who fell to Man earth. Who fell to earth. That's mm-hmm. what, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously Bowie, you know, not a movie. He was also in uh, Extras, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. He had that amazing scene. I, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. I have seen it, but it cracks me up every time. <laughs> it's like he's he's just this stubby nosed little man or something like that. that. And he's like, yeah, thanks, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> But an, a musician, um, you've got Meat Love, who was in Fight Club. Yes, yeah. With the massive man, man tits. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, who else have we got? Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Frank Sinatra was obviously in the mm. the original Ocean's Eleven, mm-hmm. I believe. I could be wrong. I'm going to get told off if I'm wrong. No, there. I think he was. I think you're right there. I it, With the old, old I've, someone's put Sting down in the comments. Sting actually, yeah. I've seen him give a few good performances. Actually, it was in that new um, show that was on Disney Plus last year, Only Murders in the Building, and he was he was good in that. Oh, see, I didn't know he was in that. Mm, yeah, he's really good in it, actually. He cracked me up a few times. Um, but yeah, I I, I, I don't know. I, I sort of feel like I'd actually... And I'm not a very big Lady Gaga you've got fan a, at school, but You've got a lot of the black rappers who've been in it, like Ice Cube. That's true. Oh, I love Ice Cube. Not, not musically. No offense to anyone who's a fan of him, but I think he's a great actor. Like his comedy. Lucy. Yeah. Who's in that? Yeah. Um. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, I'm, tra- I'm trying not to kind of look and try and cheat. You know, yeah. by looking over, look over here. Uh, yeah. Got Harry Styles is obviously in um, Eternals. <laughs> Yeah, he was really it, good in Dunkirk. Yeah. He was really good yeah. in Dunkirk. I mean, I feel like Eternals... He would die, but he didn't. But uh, no, no, Sorry, yeah. spoiler. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I thought, I thought he was he was actually really good in that, um, which is why I'm looking forward to seeing him properly in the MCU. I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm sure that this, there are some musicians who take that step yeah, into acting. Some, some people saying in the comments, Tina Turner, um, which got... Man, Max, you're on Thunder Zone. Yeah, yeah, Jared Lee, Jared Lee, Leto, of course, as well. Um, but but you can see the same with Johnny Depp because they've got side projects as bands. That's true. Yeah. Um, someone said Debbie Harry for Video Drone, but I I didn't think she was great in that. I haven't seen Video Drone, so I didn't know she was in that. So. Uh, yeah, I I wasn't a huge fan of that movie, surprisingly. Um, I think. Uh, but, what? Well, no. Was yeah, Iggy Pop in anything? Oh, Alice Cooper, Wayne's World. Haven't actually seen that. Haven't seen that. What? Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hang on. You haven't seen Videodrome? <laughs> yeah, but Wayne's World, man. I want the cinema yeah. scene. Oh, yeah. I used to have a Wayne's World cap. Um, I'm trying to... I'm, trying, I'm, I'm now looking. I'm now looking to see if I could spot any others. I've got this, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, uh, performance, Mick Jagger. Okay. But I haven't seen that one yet, so I can't really comment how good of an actor Mick Jagger is. Yeah, can't imagine a... him being great, but I could it be. He's me thinking there's few few actors which um few musicians that go into acting and then do both. Um so you could say Russell Crowe, yeah. he does he's got his jazz band. 
Hugh Jackman does yeah. his musical tours. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff Goldblum, he's got his he's got his jazz, jazz. bands as well. Mm. I actually um, love his. Um, I bought his first album, so I think he's got two or three now. But his albums crack me up because I think they're all done live, and in between he starts talking in his typical Jeff Goldblumy stuff. What about um, Jack Black with Tenacious D? Oh yes, of course. Yeah, that's a good shout. Yeah, love Tenacious yeah. D. Love Jack Black. Yeah. Because he was, um, I think he was originally a musician as well. Then he went into acting. Yeah, I think a lot of them sort of uh, like Jack Black. I think you know his music career didn't go particularly too well. Then he went to acting, and then when he became a bigger name, he went back to his music yeah. group. But, Has anybody um, else come up with any suggestions in the comments of any actors, musicians? Um, no, there's a. It's it's sort of what we said. We got Cliff Richard's names come up again. <laughs> Roger Daltre from the Who. I'm trying to. He was in. What, um, Buddy's song, the one that's you know, it's got I am the one and only is the song from that uh song. Mm. It, you don't know that one, do you? You know no. the song, I know the song, yeah, Hulk, yeah. <laughs> but that was actually the song from the movie. Okay, I'm trying to f figure what film it could be from. Is it? I'm um, yeah, oh, Buddy's song, yeah. Okay, I'm not I too sure. Late eight, no, it wouldn't have been, would it be late 80s? I can't remember. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the theme song for that. No, there but yeah, I mean, actually, to be fair, we've gone through quite a few people there that are all musicians, which have actually had some decent acting performances there. Yeah, exactly. And um, what other ones we got? Oh, uh, Jules is here. Hello, Jules. Um, what are your thoughts on the band Radiohead? Now, personally, I don't know loads about Radiohead. I like their hits, and that's about as far as I've gone with them. Okay. Um, I like Radiohead. Um, I, my favorite, I, I, there's an album, OK Computer, which came out mm -hmm. in 97, 98, if I can remember correctly. I love that. That album is, is mm -hmm. one that I play back to back all the time, all the time. Sorry, Paranoid Android. What a tune that is. Yeah. It's a really, it's like a, it's a bit like Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, how it starts off and it goes different stages mm -hmm. of music mm -hmm. and operatic. It, the same with, um, Paranoid Android, it starts off something and goes up and it goes down and it's such a journey it takes you on um, I wasn't a big fan of the debut album The Benz, but I do mm -hmm. like a few songs off there like High and Dry, Street Spirit Fading Out, um, Iron Lung um, things like that but then they went and started doing Kid A where they went all kind of um, technical and like not kind of dancey but they were all very computer generated kind of music uh, the, which, the, but although I do like one of them, which is called Every, "Everything in the Right Place," which is of Vanilla Sky, um, mm -hmm. but then it went all. But I, I like I like them when they were like playing their instruments and not playing on the computers generating yeah. the music. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I'm a I'm, I'm a big fan. Of, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan, but I do like Radiohead. But yeah, if you're ever gonna wanted to listen to an album, I would say OK Computer for me was mm -hmm. one of the best albums. I mean, you know, it's got Paranoid Adra, Karma Police on it, Fit of Happy is on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 an awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure if um, Bob, Bob may agree with me that OK Computer is probably the best Radiohead album, if not one of the best albums of all time. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know what it is. I just have yet to really take the time to sit down and listen to them properly, but um. But that is an album because life. of Bob Bob. I'm going to go back and revisit now. <laughs> um, here we got Matt H. Haskin. What's your favourite live album? Linkin Park Live in Texas. Oh, okay. I actually have heard that. I have heard that. A long time ago, though. I can barely remember it. Because but... I like the... I forgot what the name of the song is. It was the one at the end where Chester adds a bit onto it. Mm-hmm. Is that he said he's going peeling off my face and all this because he adds extra lyrics into it, and mm -hmm. it's just because I've seen Lincoln Park live as well, and they were amazing. That listening to the actually, I think no, that was it. I bought that live album because I think it came out a month before I went to see them live in Manchester back in 2005, and I just played it non stop. So when I went to see them, I knew kind of what to expect, but like a set list mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it was oh, yeah, so the best live album is yeah. probably. Lincoln Park, um, live in Texas. Yep, there you go. 
okay. Yeah, that's a good pick, to be fair. I do remember really enjoying that. Um, for me, I'm going to go Paul McCartney and Wings, Wings Over America from 1976, I think. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've heard quite a few live albums, but that, that one's just always really stuck with me. Well, really well. And of course, Oasis is never 1990s. That is a, yeah, that's a, that is a good one. I, I, again, purely because I was there a week earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, I, I, there's a few um, um, uh, Peter Gabriel ones I really like as well. I always really enjoyed listening to him live as well. Yeah, I mean, I've got loads of live um, uh, uh, Blu-rays, like mm. Coldplay and Noel Gallagher and yeah. Ed Sheeran. Um, oh, you don't like Ed Sheeran, do you? Uh, I'm not a big fan. I don't mind him. I don't mind him, but <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, it has to be that live in Texas. I just love, especially again, it came with a DVD. I keep forgetting that comes with a DVD. I have to take yeah. that out and put it on the telly. <laughs> Such a good album. Yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, I'm just going to bring this comment up here quickly. Um, Jules has very kindly donated five pounds. Thank you, Jules. <laughs> there you go. Well done, Jules. That's great, thank you. Yeah. I mean, hey, wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Always get a bit speechless on those ones. Um, now we've got to find where I was in the comments again, though. <laughs> Thanks for that, Jules. Much appreciated for that one. Well, for James, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I, I you haven't got this added on yours, have you? The donate button. <laughs> no, um, because you've got over a thousand subs. That'll be why I'm guessing. Oh, I don't know. I was literally just bored messing around with the settings. This was about oh six, seven months ago, and I realised I could just add the button. I was like, oh, why not? <laughs> I think yeah, I think it's to do with the subs because you don't pay for streaming, do you? No, no, no. No, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, so I'm actually quite useless with YouTube. People don't realise this about me. Um, <laughs> I normally have to get help from my good friend Ryan with all this stuff. So I, I have no idea how to do like no. your avatars and your pictures. I just make it up as I go along. Yeah, I've asked uh, Mr. Paul himself, Big Paul, like, um, for loads of times, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? I'm, I'm actually quite useless with technology. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, before I forget. Have you seen that link you can get? This is purely off track again, where mm -hmm. you can change words so it looks like it's the Batman font. Oh, but... I saw this on your story. I saw this on your story. I haven't yet, but I was going to ask you about it because I was thinking okay. I might put something up for my review. Send, after we're finished, I'll send you a link so you can do it yourself. When, when are you seeing the Batman, by the way? I know we're going off Friday. Time. I know, Friday, 8 o'clock. Oh, exact same time as me. <laughs> Funny as my, my mate who I used to work with, he kind of mm. still works at the same company, but in a different location. I booked it. And he's actually randomly sat two seats, oh, really? behind, like, the seat behind me and to the left. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's all because I wanted to get it booked up. I didn't know whether it was going to be sold out or anything. But, yeah. So, yes, Friday, 8 o'clock. I probably won't do a review because, again, I know I've gone off topic here, but I think everybody and every man and his dog will be doing it. So, unless Guys. someone specifically says... Would you do a review, Paul? I'd like you to do a review. Then I'm not going to bother. I'm, uh, I'm, I mean, uh, I'll just go on Instagram and go, really enjoyed it. 8 out of 10. Yeah. I mean, the last film I reviewed was The Matrix. Um, I didn't bother with Uncharted, um, Death on the Nile, and whatever else has come out since The Matrix. So I feel like I'm sort of due to do a review. <laughs> well, that's when I review. I watched that Demons last night. Uh, I know, Ooh. again, we still. Try, try not to go off subject, but that was that 80s classic Dario Argento when I watched it and it was shit. Mm -hmm. And I just put it straight on Instagram. Watch this, 4 out of 10. Goodbye. That was it. Yeah, see, <laughs> I, I do that. Could... That's the thing. Like, all these movies I'm missing, I always make a quick tweet on Twitter about it. Like, like I, I use Instagram purely just to promote my videos and stuff. Um, I don't really use Facebook that much, even though I'm in all these groups and I've even got my movie bug page. Twitter is what I love. I love Twitter. Every, everything I watch, I'm like, yep, there's a tweet for it. Enjoyed it. Because <laughs> it's just short and sweet. New new Uncharted movie, good time. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Quick yeah. little tweet up. Only thing I use Twitter for is to find out all the updates of the Newcastle squad. <laughs> so I'll be there. When, I, when it's not on telly, I'm just like, refresh. Still nil, nil. refresh. Yeah. Oh, fuck, for 1-0 down, refresh. Oh, the other team's had a record. Because it's, like, it, uh, um, it's like Jordan Movie Worm if he's watching... Um, his Twitter is just constant football updates. I've got no idea what he's talking about, but I know everything that I, I, I see all of the information come through from him still. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, unfortunately for Jordan, at the current moment in time, his team's below mine in the league. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Jordan, I didn't mean to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Mr. Jamie Powell is here. Hi, Jamie. Uh, my favourite of all time is Rocking the Suburbs by Ben Folds. Either of you heard of him or his songs? I, I've heard of him, but I don't really know anything of his, off the top yeah. of my head at least. I remember Ben Folds 5, but I'll be honest with you, again, it was when I was at uni and I didn't... I. I couldn't name any of his songs. I have heard Ben Folds five, but mm -hmm. not him as a solo artist. So sorry, Jamie. Um yeah. you've you've stumped both of us there. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> yeah, try again. So Must try him. harder. Um uh, Bob Bob has also put my favourite album is probably OK Computer or Dark Side of the Moon. Okay, so he's gone for Pink Floyd and Radiohead. Yeah. So I told you OK Computer. I told you would like OK Computer. I can't remember if we've spoken about Pink Floyd before. What's your thoughts on them? Because I went through a massive phase of them at one point. I got the CD box set Discovery on the cheap. It's got all their albums in other than ugh, their last one, that Boring River album. Um, but I did buy that one on vinyl, so I do have it in the collection. And I, 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 I got, got about two-thirds of their catalogue, um, and I went through a, a huge phase of playing them, and then... I don't listen to them that much anymore, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think I've ever properly listened to Pink Floyd. Obviously, I know some of their songs. Mm. I know um, a friend of a friend, he loves them. Every T-shirt he wears yeah. is a Pink Floyd T-shirt. Yeah. They had must have at least covers, 100 sure. of them. Yeah, they had some of the best album covers, I reckon, for sure. Because I used to have that. <laughs> that, that Dark Side of the Moon is the prism, isn't it? With the, mm. That is an iconic album cover. Yeah, my dad liked I, it. My dad liked all that kind of stuff, like Clapton, Cream, Led Zeppelin. Oh, love, yeah. yeah. Well, that they're, they're more my speed. Like I still listen to Clapton and Cream. Funny enough, I was listening to listen to two Clapton songs on my way in from work today. So he's he's still always going on with me, Clapton. I've, I bought all of his albums. I went to see him live. So yeah, I've got quite a lot to do with him in the collection. Yeah, but Pink Floyd. I don't think I've ever even Led Zeppelin. Like I said, I don't. Don't have any. My dad obviously loves all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, but again, I, I'm kind of like, whereas I'm a snob for Oasis with Led Zeppelin, I'll be like, oh, I'll just put on uh, Stairway to Heaven because it's yeah. really popular. Or I'll put on, um, I always forget the name of it, the one of uh, Thor, Ragnarok, and School of Rock. Oh, um, Immigrant Song, isn't it? Immigrant Song. Immigrant Song, that's it. Yeah, I always forget it's called Immigrant Song. Yeah, that one. Um, I love that song. Um, here, here's a thing. Obviously, you mentioned you had Clapton on. Over the past two weeks, whenever I get in the car, whether we're taking the kids dancing or taking gymnastics or taking the swimming or going somewhere, every time I have one song on the car and repeat, and that is Wigwam. All with, right. Do you really want to taste it? <laughs> it is obviously the, the song of Peacemaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I a song is so good. I'm driving oh, People must be going, what the yeah, fuck is he listening to? Yeah, it's and a, I'm going, do you really, really want to taste it? Yeah. Oh. Honestly, I'll be honest. I've, I've, you know, I, I was not aware of this song before, and I've I've fallen in love with it, I must say. I've fallen in love with that whole intro. It's, I'll play the song, and I can just imagine John Cena dancing to it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, um, but it's not even an, an 80s song either. It's a recent, in the last 10 years, song. It doesn't surprise me. The production, it sounds 80s, but then the production just sounds too fresh and too modern for it to be 80s, like, I think. They're a Norwegian, but I think they're a Norwegian band. Um, mm. But if you, I look on YouTube for it, and there's a, an acoustic version of just the guitarist and this guy oh, singing. Mm. And it's almost like they've been rejuvenated because of mm. um, James Gunn using it on the soundtrack. Um, yeah. But yeah, that song is on. I'm surprised I haven't played it today, to be honest. I think it hasn't been on the cup, so it hasn't been on. But yeah, oh, I'm going to try and learn the riff on my guitar. Yeah. Which will probably just end up sounding awful. Um, but yeah, that, that, that song, that it goes from that and everything's electric. They just kind of, those are the mm. only two songs on the Spotify list in the car at the moment, just constantly. Because yeah. I don't travel that far now. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go to work because I went from home. So it's just that. I mean, I dropped Ben off at um, dancing on Sunday and I must have listened to that song five times. Yeah. Down and back. Yeah, I, I don't know all the words. 
No, oh no, no, it takes me ages to learn the words songs. I see, I, I listen to songs a lot when I'm driving, and then, like, funny enough, on the weekend, I bought, I bought um, a new game for my Switch, and I bought that a new, that new Horizon game. So, sort of, when I'm not talking to some one of my mates on my PlayStation party, and when there's not like a cutscene, I normally have like my music on in the background as well, sort of. But I, I again, going back to the the how much time do you have to play vinyl and stuff? I just wish that I had more time to sit down and do that. Because normally it's just through my phone, I'll admit. Because when I done my old channel, I used to play my vinyls a lot. Whereas now, most of my music listening is done. It's done on this. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's on like now. Now music is like I just go, hey Siri, play this. Okay, yeah. you wanted to play Little Mix. No, I didn't. The kids did. <laughs> Because you're not allowed to listen to your own music in the house until they're not there. So a little yeah. mix it is. <laughs> so I've now, look, if, if you looked at my Spotify, you'd be like, why are you listening to little mix, Anne-Marie? And I'm just like, because the, yeah. I'm fucking, I'm sick it's, of little mix. It's funny, I think it was like, I think it was a good two weeks ago now. My sister had a load of friends around and my sister's phone was dead. And they were downstairs in my front room pre-drinking before a night out. And my sister was like, I need your phone, I've got no music. I was like, okay. So she borrowed my phone. They will leave for their club or whatever at half ten. And I look at my phone, and the songs that she's been listening to, I've never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, so, that's what it is, man. That's when you know you're getting old. When when yeah. people who are younger than yourself start listening to stuff, I'm just like, right. what is that? To be it's fair, like... I listen to a lot of old music as it is, but I must admit, it's like the, the songs that she was listening to, I would have never heard of, even if I was into a lot of today's stuff. I think. <laughs> The way that I know I'm getting old now is you go to something like, which has got celebrities in it. So you've got like uh, Dancing on Ice or mm -hmm. um, Strictly or um, uh, the, the Jungle one. Oh, get, I'm a celebrity, get me here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I know I'm old because I'll go, who's that? Yeah. I'm, I've never heard of them before. Oh, no, I'm the same. All these reality stars, I ain't got a clue on them. <laughs> but no, they're not reality stars. They're like DJs or musicians yeah. or actors. And I'm just like, I have no idea who you are. No, I'm, I, honestly, I'm the same with those things. Because I used to watch I'm a Celebrity about eight years ago now. So it's been a long time since I watched that. But like every year I do look at the lineup. And the last two or three, I've known no one. <laughs> To be honest, I can hold my hand up and say I have honestly never watched I'm a Celebrity all the way through. It's not mm. something I remember when I was younger watching Big Brother, yeah, um, when that first came out, but then that dragged on a bit. Thank god that's dead now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've never sat down and watched all the celebrity. The wife won't watch it because she, she hates snakes, so because it might yeah. be snake, I mean, obviously, I know they won't because they're in Wales, but if they're in Australia, mm -hmm. they might be, so she yeah. wouldn't watch that. Um, but again, it's just this unconditional love for anything mm -hmm. from my region where you got to support on deck it's yeah. it's yeah i was saying i mean oh my god off topic yeah i don't know why i got on the subject yeah. but we're watching the saturday night takeaway on on, on obviously saturday mm -hmm. and the guy came up doing the adverts was from newcastle and he's oh geez lads i must say like, yeah because if that was somebody else so like graham norton or something i'll, I'll be like mm -hmm. oh thank you but because it's them i'll be all right lads oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. you know it's, it's that little bit of little bit of banter yeah um but yes, sorry, yes. Yeah. But technically, that is music because I did do um, Let's Get Ready to Rumble. So we can. That's true. That's true. I remember when that became an, uh, a number one hit. <laughs> awesome. AKA TJ and Duncan. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh, God. As soon as they performed it, you knew it was going to blow up on the charts again. I love Bite of Growth. I love yeah. Bite of Growth. Uh, Sophie is here. Hi, um, Sophie. Have you seen the musical Sunshine on, what's that, Leaf? Leaf, the Scottish one. I what well, I have not. I, I you know I even struggled to pronounce it. So big surprise, I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not in. I think did I say this too? I, no, I think this is when West Side Story came out, mm. and I said at the time I have no interest in it because it's a musical, whether it's an award-winning thing. I think I don't think it was with you, but I think it was in one of the groups, and I've just got I've got no interest in anything. Mm -hmm. Same with La La Land. Mm -hmm. Music, musician. <laughs> musicals don't do it for me yeah. at all. I think the last musical I listened to or watched was probably um, Across the Universe, the Beatles one. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, I mean, as you know, I'm, I am I love the musical. I, I <laughs> don't know why. They resonate really well with me. Um, 
because it's like it's mentioned earlier, like tick tick boom. I'm I'm desperate to get hold of the vinyl for that because I loved it. Um, That's the only reason I haven't watched Rocket Man. Oh really? Well, because it's a musical. You don't, yeah. See, Rocket Man was also my fault. I much preferred it to um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Much. Yeah, I watched it. Bohemian Rhapsody because I knew it wasn't a musical. Mm-hmm. It was more about acting than singing. Obviously, I know that it sing- it's acting the other one, but yeah, because it's more of a musical. I was just like, oh, sorry, not just. I I think Rocket Man might surprise you because it it isn't as like in your face as most musicals. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It is very still. There's a you know it feels like a biopic as well. It's just when they do the songs, it's not like he's performing. It it feels it's like it, it's weird when he does the songs. It feels like a musical, but then when he's not, it feels like your bog standard biopic. So it's, okay. it's a it's an odd movie, but I think I think that one you'd like. But yeah, I mean, if you don't like musicals, fair enough on La La Land and you know uh, West Side Story and stuff. This is where one one of these days on, on when we talk movies, I'll be like, oh, I love this, and you'll be like, oh, that's a musical. I go shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, like well, like Lion King, would you class as a yeah? Well, okay, maybe I mean, Lion King. I would. Yeah. I don't know. Live I, action I'm musicals, stuck. I'm going for. Don't like. Yeah. No, I'm 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 a sucker for musicals. You know, I was I was bought up on uh, Moulin Rouge and Mamma Mia, so I've sort of been forced to like musicals. I did um, like Moulin Rouge. Didn't mind it. Mamma Mia, yeah. never watched because I despise Abba with a passion. Oh no, we love Abba because. I think I told this last time as well, student union, all the girls were like, Abba, 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 Abba. and I'm just like, oh, no. That's fair. I know what you mean. I, I, it, every time I, I don't go to clubs that much anymore, but every time we do, it's like, I, I can't lie. I, I kind of love it when they come on because they're just so upbeat, but they do come on all the time. <laughs> I don't think I could go to a club again, although I'd like to, because I think I'd go in there and go, oh my God, I'm the oldest person in here and I'm you know only what? 43. I went, we we got a club near us, and it's truly terrible, but it's the only one near us called Pop World, and it's a franchise, they're sort of every way. Um, and the last time I went was about 10 months ago or so, and I caught COVID in there, So, and I remember not enjoying it, so I was like, right, I'm not going back there. Anyway, I think it was about three weeks ago now, a group of my friends finally dragged me back there, and I remember walking in, and even I was like, my God, I feel old. Like everyone in there was like 18, 19. I was like, oh my God, this is like, <laughs> I just wanted to go to the corner of the room and just sort of like, just do my own thing. I was like, I just, I don't want to be seen. I feel too old to be here. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd only moved away from Whitley Bay for about two or three years. And I went back and I went to a club in And bear in mind, it's only three years. I was like, this has changed so much in three years. What is going yeah. on? Have it's... I become a pensioner? It's funny. I've just seen one of my one of my friends who was actually there with me. My friend Luke's just popped up saying, "I hate pop world." So there you go. There's another one who's on my side. <laughs> Covid world. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. It, it's quite funny that um, you know, every time I every time I want to dismiss the club now, I can just go, "Well, I caught Covid there." <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're like, um, can I have um two shots of sambuca pint? Um, do you want Covid to go with that? Uh, yeah. yeah, no problem. Cheers. Is it free? Yeah, I'll have that as well. Yeah. Yeah, might as well. Might as well have some of that. <laughs> it's he, he shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have been getting off with all these mingers. That would have been yeah. the problem. Oh, <laughs> oh it's funny because I think oh, I shouldn't say this. One, one of my friends, I'm not going to name him, and I wasn't there with him this time. He told me about this. He went in there once, and he was at the bar. Some girl was talking to him, and he was thinking, oh, "Okay, here we go." And then um, she went, oh, yeah, I'm 17. Here's my fake ID. And he was a bit like, oh, okay, see you later. <laughs> when you go up to, I mean, obviously I don't do it, but you go up to a club nowadays and go, can I have your number? Yeah, hang on a minute. Just before, I'm going to give you a spell a minute. Can you, hang on, I'll just, mm-hmm. just put that in there. Wait 15 minutes. Yeah, you're negative. Yeah, okay, come on, give us a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just the... walk around with a COVID test in your back pocket. Yeah. The joys you don't need of... a condom now, just a COVID yeah. test. <laughs> the joys of modern day clubbing. <laughs> um, right, I suppose we'll do one more question, shall we? Um, you know and then so we'll go to oh, God, that has actually flown by. It really has, honestly. I literally just because normally I like to give like twenty, maybe fifteen minute warnings to people, and I literally just looked at the time and was like, "Oh shit!" Um, <laughs> but uh, Mr. Playtendo guy, whose stream I'm on this Wednesday, I'm pretty sure it's this Wednesday. Yeah. 
Um, I'm really excited for it, actually, because I'm a big fan of his channel. Um, mentioned Mr. Buddy Holly, a talented musician taken way too soon. Of those kind of first musicians like Elvis, Chuck Berry, and I love Elvis and I love Chuck Berry, but Buddy Holly is my favourite of those early six, uh, 50s sorry, uh, rock and roll musicians who come about. Yeah, because um, obviously he died with a big bopper and um, mm. Richie Valens um, with the toss of flip a coin, I think it was, to get on there as opposed to going on the coach. Yeah. Um, and obviously it wasn't for that. We wouldn't have had um, uh, the day the music died, would we? No. You know, bloody Buddy Holly died and given us that song. Honestly, that song would never existed if he was still alive. But no. yeah, he, he was one of those on the... But see, that's how he can tell things are different back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Is that they had to travel a country in 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 a coach, which is yeah. basically no heaters, but it'll be all right for when kind of in, not not that much in the summer because it'll be hot, but I'll have the windows and get the air coming in. So you could either freeze and be uncomfortable or go on the plane, and obviously the engines froze up, and what happened happened. Um, yeah. There's a lot of singers who passed away, you know, in, in air accidents as well, and because it was that um, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, I think from. TLC, she died mm -hmm. in the, and then there was the last who was in, uh, was it Vampire of the Damned, Village of the Damned? I've forgotten him, that vampire mm. one. Yeah, the, I know who you mean. Yeah, well, the, funny enough, going back to the Beatles, they nearly died on a plane at one point, didn't they? They went up and um, looked out the window, one of the engines on fire. <laughs> so that would have, there would have been, I think, a lot of teen suicides. And I mean, Christ, look at take that now when they yeah. split up. Christ, there were people on suicide watch. Yeah, the Beatles have gone. Yeah, well, it's like you see all the girls at uh, the Shea Stadium concert and stuff just literally fainting in the audience. It was. There's the um, I forgot the name of the band now. There was a band recently who were on tour, and they, well, they didn't. Mm. They went off a bridge. I've forgotten the name of the oh, band. No, I know what you were going to say now. And didn't their album shoot up the charts or something? Yes, I forgot. Mm. I forgot. I also forget the name of the album because I thought I'll give it a listen. And it was another album I just put on repeat, and I thought, oh my god, it's a really good album. Yeah, I'd done the same. It was it was a good two three years ago now, I think, wasn't it? But oh, I, what's I, the name I, of the band. It was like two words. Yeah, I think I actually caught the news report, and I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. I'll go check the album out. And um, yeah, I was like, oh damn, that's a shame. Really good. <laughs> really good. I was just like, Christ, I was even going to get like a t-shirt with a band name on it and everything. It's such a shame that it takes that for some of these bands to get famous. It's like, oh, to get famous, yeah, you've got, you've got to die. It's like, come Yeah, on, it's... okay. I didn't sign up for this shit, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, man. James, what's the name of that band now? <laughs> I honestly can't remember. I don't think they're on my Spotify anymore, but I did have a few of their songs on my playlist at one point. Because Cole played the cover of their song at Glastonbury, didn't they? They did. That's right. I I remember that now. Oh, no, I still can't yes. help you. <laughs> no. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Before we go, mm. there's a band which no longer are together, but I think they recently got back together, mm -hmm. which are called, which is really hard to buy their albums on eBay because oh. they're called The Music. Uh, yep, I can see why they're hard to buy. <laughs> yep. So when I put on eBay The Music CD, you get like three billion replies, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a band which I never heard of. And then my mate went, Oh, you gotta to listen to this. And they did a song, no word of lie, the song was called You Might As Well Try to Fuck Me. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, Okay, right. But then they released their debut album. I thought, oh, I'll just buy it. Mm -hmm. And they're really good. It's like across the guitarist is very Jimmy Page esque. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like a raw it's hard to describe their music, mm. but the I even got the misses and every every girlfriend I've got I went out with and then mm. now wife, I've got them into the band the music and Matthew J, who you listened to last or hopefully you listened to even though yeah, I've been yeah, lazy and haven't listened to Josh Harrison. Screenshot of me playing uh, his album and I, I did actually really enjoy that. I can't lie, I never got round to the second album you recommended to me, but I did play that one and enjoyed it. It's not bad, is it? No, he's dead I, as well. Yeah, it's it's. I can't remember what song it was. I did I did actually write it down because I wanted to bring it up on the stream. The um, first one's called Four Minute Rebellion. Yeah, I think it was the second or third song. One of them I really enjoyed. But I can't, I can't remember what one it so is. He did do a few. There's one of them which, is, which he's got a few singles. It just goes... Yeah. I, I do remember... Was it your... Always Gonna Be Your Boy? Yeah. 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 Yeah
going too soon. I seem yeah. to recall really liking that. I think that's yeah. the one I really enjoyed. But yeah, but yeah, dude. Oh yeah, I can't, I can't remember. But yes, um, but he, him, he was down in Nottingham. He fell out of a um, tenth floor window in a flat bottle of flats. Really? That's um, crazy. A lot of these musicians, it's a shame because it does seem like a lot of them have quite unfortunate ends. <laughs> you're really talented, but you're gonna die when you're 27. Yeah. So live while you can. Yeah. But so. uh, it, it is a shame. But you you played um the All Things Must Pass album as well, didn't you? I think since we I played a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then unfortunately Wigwam took over. Um, yeah. as I told you. Earlier. <laughs> That's um, fair. That's fair. But I still like. I still go back to which I hadn't heard. And this sounds really bad, but when we were fab, I really like that. That's a really good song because that's his tribute to the Beatles themselves, yeah. isn't it? And in the video yeah. as well, you've got George Harrison's in the video and mm-hmm. there's somebody else famous in it, I've forgotten, who just Jeff walks Lynn? across. Jeff Lynn? Huh? Is it Jeff Lynn? No. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, yes, you're right, it is, yeah. He loves Jeff Lynn, yes. Yeah, he produced it, I think. He done that. If, uh, if you like that, you should listen to the album Cloud Nine. That was like his comeback album. It was it was the album that made the Traveling Wilburys as well. Him and or Jeff Lynne just come in because they, they were good mates. George said, I've got some songs because George hadn't done an album in like six years. And Jeff was like, oh, well, I can produce if you want because he's a great producer. Um, so they made the album. And then while they were making it, they were talking about like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we made another band? And they were like, oh, we could get Dylan. He'd want to do it. And then all of a sudden, you know, they went ahead and, I think they met Roy, Roy Orbison. Orbison. Was, yeah, I was going to say, Roy Orbison, yeah. was it? Brett Roy, and then I think Tom Petty come into the fold, and then, yeah, the next thing they done was Travelling Wilburys, because that was all George and Jeff again. Um, Clapton was on it at some point, wasn't he? Uh, Clapton wasn't, no. Nah. I, I I'm sure he was in nah. something else with Harrison. Yeah, oh, he's buddy. He done um, straight after the Wilburys, the next thing Harrison done, and the last thing he really done while he was alive, because his last album got released after he died. Um, he done the Japan concert, which Clapton went to with him. Okay. So, so much what, like free Tibet kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember what it was now, but it was. It, it's not one of my favourite live albums, I'm not going to lie. But um, yeah, and no, that's a shame, really, because that all happened. Uh, Cloud Nine came out in 87. Wilburys and the live Japan tour happened in late 80s to 91. Then Harrison done nothing. And then, of course, died in 2001. And then his album he was working on come out in 2002. So it's a shame, really. The last 10 years of his life, he didn't really release anything. No. Yeah. Uh, and then he got broken into, got stuck yeah. down with cancer again. And then he... Yeah, I remember, actually, when he died, I was working at Northern Rock. And mm. I, was, I got a message, and I said, oh, George Harrison's like, oh, my God. And I said, oh, God, I'm not happy. She's like, well, people are like, why? I said, oh, George Harrison's died? And they were like, who's that? Yeah. And at that point, I was no longer friends with him. Yeah, <laughs> I, I still think he's my favourite Beatle, George. Um, so yeah, it's a shame. You know who's mine is. We've discussed it. it's always Lennon, Lennon all the way. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to think of that band that died. You know? <laughs> it's going to annoy me now I'm because because be... I could Google it, but, but my phone yeah. is is what I'm using. Um, I'm going to be expecting a message uh, tomorrow of the band's name. <laughs> oh, fuck, sake, it's annoying yeah. the shit out of me because it's two words. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yes. Anyway, um, what time is it? Right, we'll leave it there then, shall we? Yeah, we'll wrap up there. Um, thank you for coming on. Thank you for everyone for being here. Um, yeah. and I'm sure we'll do we'll do another one in a few months over on your channel again. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll do uh, or oh, we can do other stuff. You know, we can yeah. just we do we could do we could do a music and movie chat or something like mm. that. Just kind of because otherwise you're going to be going over the same form and you know, the same questions. And things will become a bit stale, which is the whole idea of this music one, wasn't it? When I said mm-hmm. to you, we'll freshen things up a bit. That's true. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm always game for anything. It's it's always a pleasure to do a stream with you. So hey, uh, it's, I, it's I'm always good. Game. Man. We'll, we'll plug um before we go. We'll plug um. I don't know. Why I'm saying this. I'll plug uh, the Bounty Bunch is live on Robert Fett's Bounty's channel tomorrow at nine o'clock. Don't forget to go into that. And of course, uh, play Tando guy Peter. He's got his stream coming up on. Wednesday? Yep, yep, Wednesday. At half I'm past sure. seven? Is it eight o'clock? I'm not 100% sure on the time. I sent him a message right before we started because I'm not sure myself. I was like, what time is the stream again? I'm sure he's messaged me. Because you've but, gone on with Matt as well? 
I'm really not sure, to be honest. I think I'm sure people advertise that as well. Um, so, yes, there's two more streams to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and if anybody, because I haven't been on it, so if anybody watched my stream from Friday with Evander, the two Tonys and Jason, thank you very much for watching that. Appreciated it. Um, but, yes, don't forget this guy. No, nope, this guy. There we go. I, I always get the wrong. <laughs> this guy's here. He'll be doing his um, Monday streams again. I think, Rob, you're trying to get Rob on yours, aren't you? Yes. So, um I've got, I, well, the, I do the first Monday of every month and I'm going to do the last Monday of every month sometimes. Um, I've got the Batman, Jamie, on next Monday, first Monday of March. And I'm trying to get Rob on for the last Monday of March. So, Jamie's a good laugh. I enjoy Jamie. Awesome. Oh, yeah, no. I've, I've said to Jamie, as soon as I decided that I was going to do more streams this year, as uh, Jamie was one of the first people I messaged. I was like, I, I had to get him on. <laughs> you should get Evander on. Yeah, yeah, I, I, there's there's quite a few people in the community actually that I want to get on. So I haven't had Pete the uh, Playtendo guy on yet. Um, I've arranged to get him on one, so he is going to be coming up on one. But there's quite a few people, um, that I still need to get on at the minute. That's the problem with me is I'd love to go on people's streams, but like yours, mm-hmm. kind of. I was lying there next to the band tonight, going, go to sleep. I've got to go on the stream. <laughs> go to sleep. Some you know people what? start at seven or eight, half past seven. I can't really do it. I'd love to go on more live streams and just kind yeah. of be there and, and you know, but timing's well, an issue, man. I bloody love the Bounty Bunch ones because it's great because there's so many of us. And it's cool because I don't have to do much work because there's loads of us. So I just have to sit there for 10 minutes and then I get to do a bit of talking and then I get to chill and listen. Um, because they're always so late. It's normally after I've had a shower and then I'm laying in bed and I'm like, right, this is normally when I'm zoning out. It's like, oh, I've got to... I've got to get up and set up now. But once I'm on, it's great. But the, the effort to get from my bed to my computer. <laughs> well, it's the same. On, on a Tuesday, I play football. So I drive from here 20 minutes into North Allerton where mm. I play football for, from half past eight to half past nine. I then come home, drop my mate off, come back here, mm-hmm. come in. The wife's still awake. All right, can I see you later? All right, go and have yeah. a shower, mm-hmm. get dried, get clothed, get dressed, come here, and then go. And for the last hour... I'm on the boat bunch and I'm like, uh, and I'm like, right now I can't sleep now because you, you, you kind of on a buzz from playing football yeah. and then you come back yeah. and then you're like, because you're in a monitor, you mm-hmm. got the screen yeah. time. Mm-hmm. It's just, but I wouldn't miss going on the boat bunch. I'm glad oh, that no. Rob's done it. I, I think it's an excellent idea. Um, especially when I'm not going to blow me in trouble because that's not the idea is that I enjoy doing my Sundays, mm-hmm. but I'm glad I've taken a step back and not doing it because it came I didn't want it to become a chore, and it did on the Sunday night yeah. mm-hmm. where I had to set up, and I'm like, right, well, that's my Sunday night gone, then I'm back at work, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Um, that's especially with Rob is, Rob's working now, so he can't do a Sunday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was me and Pete, and there's nothing wrong with me and Pete because that's how we started. We build up a fan base and following mm-hmm. and following and following. But then, like I said, other people started doing it, and I'm just like, everyone's doing it, I'm going to sit. So I'll come back now and again, which is why, like I said, I want to do this a bit different, which I'm glad Rob has then kind of done the live stream we did with him me him and pete and then mm-hmm. put his, his spin on it with having lee in there and having adam on there and, and having more of a kind of comedic and more people which is great because it's mm-hmm. one step different to ours because mm-hmm. obviously i do more kind of like uk and us based whereas i'll stick with the uk yeah um yeah. but yes anyway yes i'm, I'm, I'm babbling you can, yeah. you can finish the live stream we could, we could easily talk about this <laughs> after we're finished <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Hey, that sounds good. Well, hey, there's a the, the, there's a lot of streams going on, guys. <laughs> I think that's the main thing. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, we'll wrap this one up here. Thank you for coming on. Um, and hey, I look forward to our next one together in a month or so. Yeah, I just can't believe how fast tonight's gone. To be honest, but yes, thank you everybody for watching. Thanks to yes, thanks to James for having me on this channel, and it'll be on my channel next time whenever we decide on date. But yes, yeah, appreciate everybody for watching, and thanks for the questions that everybody asked. Mm, yes thank you everyone and um i will see you um wednesday over on pete's channel and um see you monday <laughs> see you later everyone Bye-bye. bye bye